What's the hardest thing about being a pro? I guess the hardest thing about being a pro is that you have to be like your own boss, especially working freelance. I just try to make sure that I am always drawing, always putting out new work. That way people can keep up with you and see that you're posting stuff like almost every day because you have to show people that you know, you're ready to work and that you're still available to do um, new jobs and new projects. So showing that you're a consistent worker is one of the most important things you can do uh, being a freelance artist. What's the toughest thing about being a pro? You know, when you're a young student to a professional, you're never going to get away from that inner feeling of like, am I good enough? You know, there's all these amazing people out there, and that comparison and the intimidation is always going to be a factor. Of course, when you're younger, that fear is something that ends up becoming more of a priority, so you use that as a form of energy to generate a lot of work. But for me, when I look at stuff like this, again, like I said, based on motivation, it really drives me to move forward. As a pro, that's something that we're always going to think about but the mindset is very much different now, where I use it as a positive reinforcement of like, I want these people to succeed. And because of that, the pros are supporting each other, it becomes a community, and we're all here in it for each other. As students, it's very much a, a self, selfish-minded game where it's like, how, do my, how am I gonna get better? What do I gotta learn to get out there to compete? And it's all about me, me, me. Now, I'm not saying it's not like that in the professional field either, but once you get to a certain point, there's a lot of respect and we want people to succeed. So that's a huge part of being a pro too. Toughest thing about being a pro, I think it's just maybe expectations that other people have of you as being a professional, like they constantly wondering what's that next thing that you're doing, otherwise just sometimes making sure that you're hitting the deadlines if people are really have these great expectations of you. Those are some things that I would say could be uh, difficult, but sometimes I really feel like it's expectations that people have of you as a professional, that you should have all the answers if you're the professional, and it's not always the case. The toughest thing about being a pro is making sure that work is constantly coming in and networking so that that can happen. Straight to the, straight straight, this straight way. To the answer, yeah. Well, what do you do to make sure that all the work is coming, yeah, the work is coming in? Yeah, so there's a lot of things, you know, like you have your YouTube channel, right? It's like a hub, right? So you look at the conventions uh, as a hub like that. You come to the conventions, get your FaceTime so that uh, they can see that you're acting like the person you're portraying across the monitor, right? Networking here at the conventions, uh, social media is great. And again, you, you just want to make sure you're true to who you are so when they meet you in person, it's not <laughs> a reality shock. I started working when I was 12 years old in the restaurant business and I started off as a dishwasher and I became a busboy and I saw that every time I was courteous to someone and make sure I focused on somebody and what they're telling me and remembering what they wanted me to do, that they were complimentary. They would um, go beyond instead of just telling me about my service that I provide them, they would go tell the uppers about it and then it would come back to me and it showed how grateful people were. So I took that business motto of you provide good service to one person, an average of 15 people are going to come and try to give you more service, right? So more business. I keep that kind of motto no matter talking to person, uh, going uh, online, and I have not had to look for work since 2004. And, uh, and most of my career has been working freelance from home. I started off in comics with Marvel and then DC, and then I got into animation uh, by 2005, designing for Hellboy Animated, I designed the Spectacular Spider-Man cartoon in 2007, and then full circle I started doing video game work, or design work, and now I'm doing more comic book work. So again, it's because of that kind of uh, formula of being courteous, but it's still being true to yourself also. Uh, what's the toughest thing about being a pro? Taxes. <laughs> um, yeah. Being freelance and dealing with taxes is terrible. <laughs> Other than that, doing freelance work in general, um, you might not necessarily know where your paycheks coming from next month, you know, or like how you're gonna pay rent, like that sort of thing. And so you're always kind of chasing projects or this or that. I mean, I've been fortunate for the past year to have a consistent project to work on, and it's actually been the two of them, both spirits. Uh, one of my creator-owned comics, as well as a uh, RPG setting book. Both get me to draw really weird stuff, and they both pay, so that's great. <laughs> nice. 
What's the hardest thing about being a pro? Hardest thing about being a pro is the changing of the business scene. My two biggest sources of income don't exist anymore. Uh, movie posters as illustration, gone, replaced by photos and Photoshop. Theme park design, gone. It used to be an entire floor at Universal, now it's not even a chair. But I was corresponding with a great old illustrator, Stanley Meltzoff, who illustrated in the 30s, 40s, and 50s. And he was saying, you know, welcome to my world. That, is a, that will be a constant in your life. Markets will arise and then disappear, arise and disappear, and you just have to be prepared for it. What superpower would be most useful to an artist? Oh man, I, I think a uh, superpower would be most useful to an artist would be time travel. You can meet all your heroes, meet all the greatest artists oh, in the cool. world. That, that would be a treat. One of my big heroes is Charles R. Knight. He was uh, an animal painter around the turn of the century up, up until about 1950. And he was the man who visually defined dinosaurs for the rest of the world. Uh, he did the dinosaur mules for the American Museum of Natural History in New York. He did the dinosaur mules for the Field Museum in Chicago. And he did our La Brea Tar Pit mural in Los Angeles at the LA County Natural History Museum. Boy, I would love to have met Knight. The toughest thing about being a pro? The dedication and the hours, definitely. You have to say no to movies and fun time with friends and, and family and all kinds of stuff. That's probably the toughest thing. Making yourself do it. So making time. Yeah. The hardest thing about being a pro? Yeah. Contracts? Contracts. Paperwork? Like reading them? No, it's more like once you do the work, especially if you're independent, it's like going after the money, going like making sure all the papers are filled out, all the, the taxes. The, the, the actual work in itself, it's actually fun. It's great. It's actually, it's fantastic. It's the reason I do this. It's like, yeah. the only difference between being pro and, and not pro is that it's just the paperwork. Paperwork, yeah. Yeah, yeah I hate that stuff. Yeah. <laughs> What's the toughest thing about being a pro? There's nothing tough about being a pro. It's fun being a pro. <laughs> it's just a lot, there's a lot of hard work before you become a pro, and then you have to keep it up. So I guess that's a little bit of a challenge and get better, hopefully, and not get worse. So that's kind of a challenge as well. But I think the what you were saying, motivation really is more the challenge as a pro. My name is Sanford Green, the co-creator of the new acclaimed series, Bitter Root at Image Comics. You can find my work at Instagram slash Sanford Green. Toughest thing about being a pro? Honestly, I'm going to modify that a little bit. Okay. The toughest thing of being a creator with his own series, his own creation, is you literally are not just the creator, you're the salesman or the marketer. Yeah. You're in, you, know, you have to deal with the marketing aspect of it. You have to deal with the financial side of things, of course, meaning when you are trying to get you know, other creators involved with your work. Compensation is something that I have to be very aware of and making sure the artists are taken care of financially, yeah. as well as myself. That becomes even more important to being a person that is beyond, it, it goes beyond the creative side. It's more of the, the administrative side. You have to be really good at balancing both of those two disciplines. What's the toughest thing about being a pro? It might be a balancing of time, uh, you know, with the different projects you have going and trying to give each thing the amount of time that they deserve. How do you balance it? Like, so you get like more than one job at the same time or? or yeah, is it different, different kinds of jobs uh, in the same amounts of time. So sometimes it's easy to balance it out because it's time-wise, deadlines come before other deadlines, so you, you sort it out that way. But sometimes while I'm working on a project, I could be motivated to work on this other project that I should wait because of the deadline, but it really pops into my mind as the thing I want to be working on. So it's just re remembering that, you know, to keep those deadlines in check. I struggle with the same thing. <laughs> What's the toughest thing about being a pro? Trying to appear pro. <laughs> Probably. <laughs> 
No, the tough things, I, the things I find really hard are the, the little managerial things like invoicing and emailing. And it's hard to stay on top of that when really your motivation and drive is all about producing art. So there's the little things on the side that, that are hard, you know, keeping invoices and accounts, all that kind of stuff. So I get a bit of help really from my wife with that stuff, which is great. It takes the pressure off. What superpower would be most useful to an artist? Uh, what superpower? The ability to clone yourself. Good oh, I'd like two Karl Kapinski. <laughs> yeah, wouldn't we all? Yeah. Uh, other than my wife. <laughs> oh, I'm sure she'd <laughs> no, like to. she wouldn't. <laughs> What's the toughest thing about being a pro? I struggle with like imposter syndrome a lot. You know, I started working with Riot about three months ago. So I'm still getting acclimated to things. Yeah. Um, I worked for a, a, a startup a company named Sky Carousel before in which I was working with them for over two years. However, that was very kind of like under the radar, NDA stuff, hasn't really seen the public yet. Going from that to a very public facing sort of uh, company, it's dealing with that kind of like, oh, I am actually here yeah. and meeting the people who are like, oh. That's a large part of it for me, honestly, letting the work go. So like I said, you have to get things done for a bit deadlines based on other needs uh, and letting the work go out to the public. You know, Once you let it go, there is no coming back to it. There is no editing it. Yeah. There is no re-uploading it. It's on the internet and it's yeah. there forever. Being able to uh, like manage my time and everything uh, in order to be proud of something that I release, right. that's definitely something I'm dealing with now. Right. What's the toughest thing about being a pro? The toughest thing about being a pro is probably deadlines. That's the thing that frustrates me the most because it tends to keep me at about 80% of what I feel like my potential is. If I have an infinite amount of time, then I get that extra night of rest to come back fresh. But if I have to just hammer to get something done, then I never feel like I'm really quite meeting my full potential. So deadlines. What is the toughest thing about being a pro? That is such a good question. You know what it is? It's really the time. As you start to roll down the hill of life, stuff sticks to you, you know? You got this bill to pay now, and now you got this car to pay, and then you have to take jobs that you don't want to take, and so on and so forth. So it can be a slippery slope, but the kind of cure for that sometimes is to be frugal and just to live below your means so that you have flexibility in your life, and then you won't have these problems as much. What's the hardest thing about being a pro? The hardest thing about being a professional artist not to disappoint and not to feel complacent and to feel like, oh yeah, you know, I got this. I think as soon as that's a trap, you know, as soon as you feel comfortable, I'm known as doing my work, things start to stall and my work kind of plateaus. So when I feel like I'm hitting that point where I'm getting bored with my work, I try to shake it up a little, either like changing a medium or just trying like something themed. Anything that's restricting helps to like narrow down what to do and I kind of break away from the routine. You know, we gotta do that every once in a while, especially if you feel like you're, uh, you're kind of plateauing. Yeah. Cool. What superpower would be most useful to an artist? Maybe having eight hands. Eight hands? Yeah, eight hands would be nice. They can, More hands. can do a lot of Hold art. a baby in one, <laughs> yes. draw with another. Holding baby drawing, <laughs> being productive. You know, there's just not enough hours in the day, especially if, you know, your hands get tired, so. Yeah. Bionic hands, please, somebody make them. I'll buy them. Hi guys, my name is uh, Lucio Parrillo, and uh, you can find my art on Instagram or uh, on my website, which is uh, lucioparrilloart.com. What's the toughest thing about being a pro? The, the difficult part of, the, of my job is uh, that I would like to do a lot of my own uh, art, so with my imagination, with my creativity. But uh, when you work for uh, companies, you have to work and make editors happy. And sometimes, most of the time, I, I love my work, I love what they ask me to do, but sometimes you do because it's work. Yeah. 
and uh, you are not very happy with the subject, with the time, and, uh, and you have to push yourself finishing this job, and maybe you would like to do something else, yeah. you have to finish it and because you have a deadline. So. Yeah. Cool, perfect, yeah. thank you. What do you think is the hardest thing about being a pro? Oh, well, that's a strange question. Uh, We're all about weirdness. And yeah, a lot of people think that you've got everything figured out, right? That, that uh, oh, you're a professional artist, you must know what you're doing at all times, so you've got it all figured out. But it, honestly, I'm always learning as I go. I often make the same mistakes and go through the same mental struggles and, and artistic and creative struggles that I've been through before where I've said, oh, I'm never gonna do that again, or I've learned my lesson this time. But what people don't realize is that, you know, creativity and artistic career you're constantly going through those cycles over and over again and relearning the same things over and over again. And, e and maybe sometimes you learn new things uh, every, each time you go through them. But there's no such thing as ever arriving at a point where you're like, okay, I got it all figured out and, and I know what I'm doing and, and you know, nobody can stop me, right? Uh, so I think when the students are thinking about you know, making a career in art, and they're starting to go through those struggles, it helps to know that we're all doing it too, right? Um, and, and that you know, they're not alone in those cyclical struggles that, that, that you go through sometimes for creative inspiration. Cool. Okay, so what's the toughest thing about being a pro? The hardest thing about being a pro is keeping up and be able to be relevant to the ever-growing new audience to consistently improve and adapt yourself to younger viewers, yeah. new fans, and all these things. Are you talking about like your the style of your drawing or the subject matter? I think it's got to be a combination of everything. Oh. Yeah. Okay. So are you adapting your style to the? I wouldn't the... say I adapt the whole style, uh -huh. but you evolve. You, you try to change a little bit of what you think people like, what you think the newer, you know, the newer fans like, obviously you have to like it yourself. If it's something yeah. that might be popular but you completely don't want to do that, then right. that does not make sense. Yeah. So you find that balance between yourself and everyone else? Yeah, yeah, <laughs> absolutely, I think so. And I, I don't think there's like an extreme black and white on what you should or can't do. You have to have fun first and then yeah. you create something that everyone likes. Awesome. What's the toughest thing about being a pro? The toughest thing about being a pro at first is making money as far as being a pro. You can get to be a very good amateur, but being a pro means you got to get people to pay you to do it. So that's the toughest thing. <laughs> I love it. The right, toughest thing about being a pro is being a pro. He's being very literal with this. Yeah, that's cool. What superpower would be most useful to an artist? The ability to be in front of a camera and, and feel relaxed, I suppose. Oh, I think I know what the best superpower. It was a superpower I used to imagine when I was a kid, that you could take a book and just absorb it all. In fact, Superman used to be able to use his x-ray vision to look at a book, read the page, and then go just the tiny fraction of a millimeter to the next page, reverse it, and see it from the other side, and then do that and go and just take the whole book into his brain. I loved the idea of that. That's a good one. Yeah. <laughs> I love it. We can't absorb books instantly into our brains, but we can absorb them through our ear holes. With Audible, you can listen to audiobooks anytime, anywhere. Whether you're walking to work, driving, at the gym, or drawing. And on any device. It will always pick up right where you left off. As I walk to work, I've been listening to The Art of Learning by Josh Waitzkin, and I definitely recommend it to all of you guys. It's great for anyone trying to master a craft and get to their peak performance levels. It's crazy how much of it is a mental game. Audible members get to choose three titles every month. One audiobook and two Audible originals that you won't hear anywhere else. Audible also offers free and easy audiobook exchanges, credits you can roll over for a year, and a library you can keep forever even if you cancel. Start learning with a 30-day Audible trial, and your first audiobook plus two Audible originals are free. Visit audible.com slash proco, or text proco to 500-500. That's audible.com slash proco, or text proco to 500-500. Alright, thank you for watching, and big thanks to Audible for sponsoring this video. I've got six more Comic-Con videos coming up, so stay tuned. And please comment if you have any questions you want me to ask other professional artists. I'd like to make more videos like this at other conventions, and I'd love to hear what you want answered. Thanks, guys.